this video, we're going to cover drug elimination models, explaining the differences between first order and zero order elimination kinetics. But before we go through the elimination models, be a sweet neuron and subscribe to the channel. Once you've done that, let's do a quick summary of drug elimination. So once a drug enters the body, the process of elimination begins. And we've covered this in previous lectures. Elimination involves metabolism and excretion. So it refers to the process by which a drug is removed from the body. This includes both the metabolism of the drug into its metabolites and the excretion of these metabolites and unchanged drug through the body's various elimination pathways, such as the kidneys, liver, lungs, and skin. Now, why is this important? Why are we talking about this? If you're watching this, I'm assuming you want to pass your exams, but the elimination process directly impacts several important aspects of drug therapy. So the first one is dosage regimen. So how often and in what amounts a drug is administered. Second, therapeutic efficacy, ensuring that drug levels remain within a therapeutic range. Toxicity, preventing drug accumulation to toxic levels and understanding how different drugs may interact or affect each other's elimination, so drug interactions. Now let's review some key pharmacokinetic terms that we've covered in earlier pharmacokinetics lecture, but we're going to be talking about them again, so let's do a quick refresher. First, let's talk about half-life. So the half-life of a drug is the time required for the concentration of the drug in the plasma to reduce by half, half-life. It's a crucial parameter because it gives us an idea of how long a drug stays active in the body. The half-life is important for determining dosing intervals and the duration of drug action. So for example, a drug with a short, short half-life might need to be administered more frequently to maintain its therapeutic effect, whereas a drug with a long half-life can be given less often. Next is clearance, which is the volume of plasma from which the drug is completely removed per unit time. It's an indicator of the of the efficiency of drug elimination from the body. So it's the volume of plasma or blood that is cleared of drugs per unit time. So remember from the drug excretion lecture how there are different types of clearance, including renal clearance, hepatic clearance, and total body clearance, which is the sum of all clearance pathways. So clearance helps us understand how quickly a drug is eliminated and is important for calculating maintenance doses to achieve steady state concentrations. Okay, next one is volume of distribution. So this is a theoretical volume that a drug would occupy if it were uniformly distributed throughout the body at the same concentration as in the plasma. So volume of distribution provides insight into how extensively a drug disperses into body tissues compared to the plasma. A large volume of distribution indicates extensive distribution into tissues, while a small volume of distribution suggests that the drug remain, remains largely in the bloodstream. Okay, now that we've refreshed your mind with these terms, let's look at the drug plasma concentration time profile after administration of a single dose. So like we've covered, there are different phases in pharmacokinetics. At the very start, there is the absorption process with the absorption lag time here, and then the absorption phase. Then we get to a maximum concentration that we know to be C max, which occurs at the T max time. And then we start the elimination phase, okay? So the elimination phase is the most typical one. It's an exponential decay, okay? So from this elimination phase, we can calculate the time required for a 50% decrease in drug plasma concentration. And time for this 50% decrease corresponds to the half-life, okay? Now, looking at this, there have been several models proposed to explain the changes in drug concentrations with time in the blood, and there is no perfect model that fits all drugs. That's why there are a few different elimination models. So there's the first order kinetics model, which is a typical exponential decay. That's the most common elimination model for most drugs at most doses. 
It occurs when the rate of drug elimination is directly proportional to the concentration of the drug in the plasma. Next, we have what we refer to as the second order kinetics model, which consists of two distinct exponential decays. This is less common in pharmacokinetics, but can occur in certain chemical reactions or drug interactions. So we're not going to go through that today. And the third model is the zero orders kinetic model, which is dose dependent. This is where there is the most risk of saturation kinetics, which we'll go through later on. And the drug concentration decreases linearly over time. So now let's subtract complexity and break this down further. Let's take a look at the rate of drug metabolism comparing first order and zero order elimination. So let's consider that we, that we inject a drug via intravenous injection, and we're going to look at the relationship between the dose and the drug's plasma concentration. So let's take it slowly here. So we have our drug molecules here, our enzymes, and then the metabolites. And as we increase the dose, more enzymes are recruited. If we inject a higher dose, there will be more enzymes recruited, which means that the rate of drug metabolism is not constant, but proportional to the drug plasma concentration. Okay, so then what does this mean? It means that the liver responds proportionally to the amount of drug that reaches it. Okay, so that means more drugs, more enzymes, and the amount of drug eliminated by the body. So with first order kinetics, when we increase the number of drugs, we're going to recruit more enzymes, as you can see here. So the drug is metabolized at a rate that increases as the concentration increases. And what we're going to see as an elimination curve is an exponential decay. All right. So that's first order kinetics. Moving on to zero order kinetics. This is a different case. So in this case, when the drug concentration increases, the metabolism becomes saturated, okay? So preventing the recruitment of additional enzyme and preventing an exponential decline in the drug, in the drug plasma concentration. Let's slow that down. Let's take a step back here for a second. So in zero order kinetics, enzyme saturation occurs when the enzymes responsible for metabolizing the drug are working at their maximum capacity. So this happens because the amount of drug in the body exceeds the metabolic enzyme's ability to process it more efficiently. So looking at our drawing here, the drug concentration becomes very high after a large dose. And this leads to the metabolic enzymes becoming saturated. This means that all available enzyme molecules are fully occupied with metabolizing the drug and they can't process the drug any faster. Sorry, the parking lot is full no matter how much more drug is present in the system, okay? Seeing the differences between first order and zero order? So then what happens when the enzymes are saturated? Great question. Well, once the enzymes are saturated, they can only eliminate the drug at a constant rate, regardless of the concentration of the drug. This then results in zero order kinetics, where the drug is eliminated at a fixed rate. Beautiful, and it's not proportional, to concentration in comparison to first order kinetics. So to simplify, in other words, no matter how much drug is in the system, the body can only clear it at this fixed rate until the concentration decreases enough for the enzymes to operate more efficiently again. The enzymes are all occupied, not single anymore, right? So that's a linear decay of the drug plasma concentration over time. And this linear decay on a linear scale corresponds to a zero order elimination model. Ah, beautiful. So then drug elimination by the liver is not proportional to drug intake. The drug has the potential to gradually accumulate within the body, which can lead to what? It can lead to major side effects and toxicity. So to summarize what we just covered, enzyme saturation occurs when the amount of drug in the body exceeds the capacity of the enzymes to metabolize it, okay? There's just too much drug present in the system. At high drug concentrations, enzymes are working at maximum capacity, okay? They're working extremely hard, leading to zero order kinetics where the elimination rate becomes constant and independent of drug 
concentration. This results in a linear decline in drug concentration over time, as opposed to the exponential decline we've seen in first order kinetics. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two models and represent it graphically, looking at the rate of drug metabolism and then summarize what we've just covered. In milligram per liter per hour, as a function of the drug plasma concentration, so what we said is that for first order elimination kinetics, this rate is going to be proportional to the amount of drugs that gets to deliver. As the drug molecules increases, so does the enzymes we're going to recruit. But in the case of zero order elimination, this rate of metabolism is going to be constant, okay? It's not going to depend on the amount of drugs. So remember the enzymes are at full capacity, they're done. Now, let's bring in the drug half-life and where does this fit into it? So the drug half-life is an important parameter we've seen in previous lectures and we also covered it at the start of this lecture. And we've defined the drug half-life as the time to eliminate 50% of the drug plasma concentration. For first order kinetics, the drug half-life remains constant. So for example, if we take one hour half-life and start with 100 milligram of drug in the blood, that means that after one hour, we will have 50 milligram in plasma or blood. If we start with those 50 milligram in blood, then after one hour, we're going to have 25 milligram in blood. So this is an important concept. The drug half-life is constant only for first order elimination kinetics. We can't calculate the constant half-life for zero order elimination kinetics. And the most common elimination kinetics are first order, which are for most drugs at most doses, okay? So let's take a closer look at the plasma concentration time curves. Let's take the example of first order elimination kinetics. We're gonna start with eight milligrams per liter of drug plasma concentration. So we've got a one hour half-life. This implies that the drug plasma concentration will split in half after one hour, okay? Therefore, it, was, it will give us four milligram of plasma per hour. And then after two hours, we're going to again divide that concentration by two, so we'll get to two milligram per liter and so on. So each time after one hour, we divide the drug plasma concentration by two. And you see, if we follow that rule, we're actually drawing an exponential decay. And this is a typical plot for first order elimination kinetics. Now, we did say that the half-life remains constant, but what about the elimination rate? What happens if we calculate the elimination rate? So what we're going to do is divide the difference in plasma concentration by the difference in time. And if we calculate it for each point, the elimination rate seems to vary. It's actually declining. And it's because the rate of elimination depends on the drug's plasma concentration. Okay, so remember what we said at the beginning, more drugs lead to more enzyme recruitment. So as a result, the elimination rate is dependent on the drug's plasma concentration. Now let's compare this to zero order elimination kinetics. The rate of elimination reaches its maximum. The elimination kinetics for this, okay, the rate of elimination is constant. This implies that we will eliminate the same quantity of drug every hour. So if we start from the same point, say eight milligram per liter of drug, and we set for this example, the rate of elimination at one milligram per liter per hour, you see that for every hour, we eliminate one milligram per liter. So if we start at eight milligram, after one hour, we'll get seven. After two hours, we've got six and then five. And after four hours, we get four milligram. And if we follow that rule, we get a typical linear plot. So here's a direct comparison of first order elimination kinetics and zero order elimination kinetics. And we've also seen a rule that 95% of the drug is eliminated after 4.5 half-lives and that is for first order elimination kinetics which we also call non-saturated metabolism okay so for this example we took a half-life of one hour and we get an exponential decay so this exponential decay can be described by the following equation here okay and k is at the rate constant of elimination for first order kinetics and t is the time. And for zero order elimination kinetics we have a linear plot which can be described by the following equation here, okay? And here k is the rate of elimination for that zero order kinetics. And again, that linear curve can be described as a linear elimination that is not dependent on the drug plasma concentration. 
All right. Now, what we're going to do now for this next half of the lecture is we're going to take a closer look at the relationship between the elimination rate constant K and the half-life for first order elimination kinetics. Okay. So for first order elimination kinetics, the drug concentration, like we've said, decreases in an exponential fashion over time. And the mathematical relationship is given by CT equals C0 exponential minus KT. So CT is the drug concentration at time T, and C0 is the initial drug concentration at time zero, and K is the elimination rate constant. Now, if we plot the drug concentration on a semi-logarithmic scale, where we take the logarithm of the drug concentration, the curve becomes linear. This is a useful property of exponential decay. When plotted on a semi-log scale, exponential decay turns into a straight line. Whereas for zero-order kinetics, the plot will not be linear. It will show this like a non-linear curve because the drug is eliminated at a constant rate, independent of concentration. So let's consider the half-life of a drug. So for first-order elimination, we can calculate the relationship between half-life and the elimination rate constant k. Now, from the equation for first order kinetics here, we can take the natural lo logarithm of both sides of the equation, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for the half-life, which is the time it takes for the concentration to decrease by half. And using this information, we can derive the formula for the half-life. And we get to the relationship that the half-life is equal to the logarithm of two divided by k. And we know that the natural logarithm of 2 is approximately 0 0.693. And this is where we get the relationship that the half-life is equal to 0 0.693 divided by k, which is the elimination rate constant for first order kinetics. Now, from this equation, we can see that the half-life is inversely proportional to the elimination rate constant k. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if the drug is eliminated more quickly, so if K is larger, the half-life will be shorter. And if the drug is eliminated more slowly, so if K is smaller, the half-life will be longer. 